welcome back to Everyday A Scan Week 4. This week I'm gonna change things up a little bit. I'm not gonna just talk about the, the scans that I did. It's Christmas time and I kinda of wanna get out of here. If you wanna see the work that I've done this week, definitely follow me on Twitter because that's where I have conversations about what I'm doing. Definitely check out the videos of my daily scans there. I post there every single day. However, this week I wanna address something that a lot of people have been asking me about, which is gear. What gear do I have? What gear would I recommend? Um, so this is it. Let's start with the camera. This is the Sony a7R II. It is a 42 megapixel DSLR, incredibly high resolution. And what I've learned from others is that it's kind of ideal for photogrammetry because of its high resolution. It has an articulating screen that comes out, uh, which really helps you when you're kind of like holding your camera up super high or down super low. I, on it, I have this hand grip which kind of came with a camera and it ended up being way more useful than I even thought. This grip is great because you can just slide your hand into it and then let go on, of the camera when you're when you're resting pretty great the lens that I have is this 15 millimeter Voigtlander lens so this lens is great because it's super wide and pretty sharp actually so for for every pixel that you get you know on the 42 megapixel sensor this lens makes a pretty good use of it I would ideally like to have a second lens that's uh, between like 30 or 50 millimeters just so you can zoom in but right now I'm kind of doing this entire thing on a budget there is a new Sony a7R 3 that was just released. Um, that's definitely worth looking into if you're looking to buy a new high-end camera. So by far the most expensive thing that I own is this camera. It was around $3,000 and I use it both for video production as well as photogrammetry. I also like to have a couple extra batteries with me when I'm out and about. And on top of that, um, I need to get a UV filter. I haven't done it yet, I don't know why. Maybe for Christmas, right? <laughs> the second most important thing is my drone. This is the carrying case that I bought from Polar Pro. It's super compact. It can hold the drone, two batteries, a phone, and a, and a controller. The DJI Mavic Pro. So when this was released about a year ago, it was an absolute game changer when it came to drones. You saw how portable it was, and everything, the SLR drone, everything fits into this one backpack. I also have an ND4 filter from Polar Pro on the on the lens. This I got actually bought for videos, but I also still use it for photogrammetry. It might not be ideal for it, but it's kind of the only lens that I have. Quick tip, never fly with the cover on your Mavic because this will just create glare and then just add noise into your pictures. I also have the quiet propellers, which are super, super nice. I'd say this is like, a, that's a must have if you have a Mavic. I bought two different colors. I don't know. So I do have three batteries. However, photogrammetry for drones actually takes very little battery. So I usually go through maybe one per scan because um, you're not doing very fast flying. You're not going far places. You're just kind of hovering and slowly moving. So that's super battery efficient. This thing lasts for like sometimes over 30 minutes. I also have a cover for the controller for the sticks to not kind of to get jammed up. Um, and stuck in a weird position. This is an old uh, Galaxy phone that I have that is kind of a backup in case my phone runs out of battery. So there's that. So the third thing that I have are the 360 cameras. So in Sketchfab, you can use 360 panoramas as a skybox around your model. So for that, I have a Gear 360. This is the second generation Gear 360. It's pretty decent, connects to your iPhone, and you can basically hold it up above your head and use your phone as a shutter, and uh, you won't get that nasty finger on the bottom of the image. I also have an Insta 361. This actually is probably one my most versatile and used 360 camera. Um, however, it took a tumble um, a few weeks ago, as you can see, all the scratches. And so both lenses got super scratched. I have to send it in for repair. And this is a new addition to the collection. This is the Yi 360 VR camera. This is by far the highest resolution 360 camera that I have at 5.7K. So I've used this camera on my bigger drone. Oh. 
Merry Christmas, everybody. I like built this mount so that I could attach any camera. The only reason why I'm not using this, the only reason why I'm not using this, the only reason I'm not using this every day is because I have a pre-production model and it stopped working. So again, I also need to return, return that. You can tell I'm kind of bad at doing that. Oh yeah, and I also use a DJI propeller bag as, a, as the lens cover. The next item on the list is my, is my time-lapse camera. I try to use this almost every time I'm doing a photogrammetry scan, just so you can kind of see a fast motion of my path throughout the scene. For that, I use the Yi Action 4K. What is it actually called? Yi Yi Action 4K Yi. So I use the Yi 4K Plus Action Cam. Um, which is basically, you know, in, it's in the category of GoPros. This was the first camera that actually supported 4K at 60 FPS. As far as I know, these two cameras actually use the same sensor. It has a screen on the back. It's got LEDs in the front to tell you when it's recording. With it, I have this Joby suction mount that I can just like stick it onto a car and just record myself as I'm doing my thing. Um, I have a couple extras that I'd like to show. One of my favorite things that I love to have with me is a huge battery pack. If you know me, you'll know that I'm kind of battery anxious like all the freaking time. And so this is a 20,000 milli, milliamp hertz, M-A-H, milli, milliamp milliamp hours. This is a 20,000 milliamp hour battery that has three USB outputs um, at like 2.4 amps. I think it's like higher than that. At three amp max per port. Yeah, it's a super quick charge output. It also has two micro USB inputs for charging the battery quicker. Um, so I like to just leave it overnight charging and it can fill up my phone basically seven times over. Something, something like that. On it, I keep a lightning cable for my phone as well as a USB-C cable for the action cam. Another quick thing I like to have are my AirPods because I like to just listen to music as I'm going about. This is probably my favorite thing that Apple has put out in years. The microphone that I'm using for the camera is this pretty simple Rode mic. Um, I'll, I'll link it down below. And that's pretty much it. So last week I, w I showed off, artist friend of mine had used two of my scans to create this awesome render. This week I've had four different artists send me their work using my scans and it blew my freaking mind away. Like, you don't know how happy I'm getting just seeing like these environments used in, 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 in completely new and creative ways. And I really wanna talk about them here. So first on the list is Technobabble that also does a daily render every day. They're an indie game developer, artist and programmer and all around fun guy. Cool. The first thing they made was, um, I don't even know, like this is like a cool super green superhero standing in this environment with trees. Oh, it's the curvy tree. I was wondering what 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 scan, what they are using this curvy tree scan that, that I have from the Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. Then they're playing with scale to really like create a huge environment out of it. And the second render that they sent me was, was this creepy and super cool like these naked women standing around like a Stonehenge. And so this was from last summer, I went to Copenhagen in Denmark and scanned this really cool grave that I found in a cemetery. And again, they're playing with scale and making the grave pillars look huge, almost like as big as Stonehenges. And just beautiful work all around. Second on the list is Mike Murdoch. Uh, he's a he's a virtual reality director at Trihelix VR. All, does all these cool renders in Houdini. Um, so he took this the bust from like the first week, the San Antoine's bust, and uh, created all these like interesting meshed layers. I really like the layer that's on the guy's head. That's kind of like a terrain elevation layer. It's just a really weird addition to his style, and, and I really dig it. For third on the list is Vlad, aka VR Human. He's an artist out of Germany that uses tilt brush, blocks, and a lot of other 3D tools to create like amazing experiences. He asked me for um, some scans of sculptures, so I sent him something that I hadn't even released yet, and look at what he created from it. It's this like super sci-fi mixture of like a real life sculpture with a rendered hand. He's doing like this whole series on rendering hands, so check him out as well. And fourth person on the list is Matt Workman, who sent me four different uh, renders of the same environment using another scan that I had from this summer from Croatia. And it was this cute little church on top of a cliff. Beautiful work all around. Uh, I, 
again, every time I saw these, my, my mouth was just like, no, like this is amazing. I did not expect for, for photogrammetry to be used in this way. I'm super excited to see those. And if you if you use them in any way, feel free to send them over and I'll, and I'll, I'll be happy to talk about them on camera. I wanna thank Oculus Medium for this sweet t-shirt. Um, and I also wanna thank David Farrell from the Medium team that showed me how to make my models on lit in Medium. I'll explain why that's important like next week. As well as Dario Saeb from Nevermind, who is one of the developers behind Anim VR. I wanna thank him for answering all my questions. All the new animations and titles that you see this week are coming from Anim VR. And again, I'll talk about this way more next week. It's an incredibly cool tool. Um, and on that note, if you like what you're hearing, and on that note, if you like what you're seeing, and on that note, if you wanna keep, if you want if you want to keep me going and on that note if you want me to keep going with this theory want me to keep going with this series give me a thumbs up um or subscribe if you want to see more of this merry christmas happy holidays and i'll see you next week